Hey guys, Brother Justin here from Charity Baptist Church. So in the last three videos, I talked about the first three points of the Modified Romans Road. Point number one, that you are a sinner. Point number two, that we all deserve to go to hell. And point number three, that Christ died for your sins. And today, I want to talk about the final point, the fourth point of the Romans Road, and that is to transfer the head knowledge that Jesus Christ paid for your sins into actually trusting in Jesus for salvation. So without further ado, let's roll the intro. Now, in order to transition from uh, the third point to the fourth point, I would always ask that question, but do you think that Jesus Christ died for every single person? And most people will say yes. And then I would follow up with this question, but do you think everyone will, will go to heaven? And people will give you a different kind of answer. And I would always explain to them, even though Jesus Christ did die for every single person on this earth, but there's something we have to do to go to heaven. And I would ask them, if God loves you, do you think he's going to make it easy to go to heaven or hard to go to heaven? And most people will say, if God loves us, he's going to make it easy for us to go to heaven. And then I will tell them, if we have to keep all these commandments, if we have to go to church or read our Bible every day, then that will be pretty hard, right? If we have to be perfect to go to heaven, and that's hard and it's almost impossible. And then I will tell them, there's a question that's only being asked once in the Bible, found in Acts chapter 16, verse 30. Here's a prison guard asking Apostle Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And I will pause there and I will ask them, what does it mean to be saved? You know, why do we need to be saved? And most people will say, uh, being saved means being saved from hell. And then I would explain to them, if you are not saved, then you are going to hell. So how can we get saved from going to hell? And then I would show them verse 31. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And then I would ask them, what does this verse say someone have to do to go to heaven? And then, and then they would answer me, is by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I would explain to them, notice that the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, means to you have to put your trust on Jesus, but not on your works. And then I would ask them, does this verse say you have to go to church to be saved? No. Does this verse say you have to be baptized to be saved? No, because the Bible only says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have to do good works to go to heaven, your faith is on yourselves, but not on Jesus Christ. And then at this point, I will move on to using uh, the gift illustration. I will turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Therefore, by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So I would explain to them, God wants to give you a gift of salvation. And then I would ask them, if I give you a gift, who pays for the gift, the giver or the receiver? The giver, right? So who gave us everlasting life? Jesus Christ. And he paid for that gift on the cross. And a gift is free. You don't have to work for the gift. And then I would give them a little illustration. If I want to give you the Bible to you as a gift, and you have to wash my car. Is that a gift? No, a gift is free. You don't have to work for the gift. And if I give you this Bible as a gift, and you have to give me 10 cents, is that a gift? No, because the gift is totally free. In the same way, God says going to heaven is a gift, right? Now, if going to heaven is a gift, and then you have to go to church every week, you have to read your Bible, you have to be baptized, is that a gift? No, because the gift is free. You don't have to work for the gift. Now, at that point, you know, the person most likely will get uh, going to heaven is by faith alone. It's not about yourselves. It's not about works. It is a gift of God. Now, after that, I will talk about the eternal security of the believers to really drill in by faith alone. It's only in Christ alone. I will show them the second half of Romans chapter 6, verse 23. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, 
our Lord. And I would explain to them, the Bible says, if you receive this gift, it lasts forever. Because the Bible says the gift of God is eternal life, and eternal means never-ending, means everlasting, means last forever, right? And then I would tell them, if I say I'm going to give you this Bible as a gift forever, can I ever take that away from you? Of course not, because I promise it lasts forever. And I will tell them, if going to heaven is a gift, it does not matter how good you are. If God promised He's going to give this gift to you forever, and then for any reason He take that gift away, would that make God? And most people will say it will make God a liar. And the Bible says, you know, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So if God promised this gift lasts forever, He cannot take away, which means once you are saved, you are always saved, okay? And then I will give them this illustration. I will tell them, just say you got saved today and you have everlasting life, right? You can never lose your salvation. And 10 years from now, you rob a bank, all right? And then in the same process, you kill two, two people. Do you think God will send you to heaven or hell? Remember, you get saved today, you have eternal life, and 10 years from now, you, you commit all these bad things. And you don't want to put your answer in their mouth. You want to let them answer, okay? And if people say you're, you're still going to heaven because you are saved forever, great. If people say no, you'll go to hell, then you want to emphasize the point that this gift lasts forever. It's not about anything uh, that you do. It's, it's all about your faith in Christ. So you want to uh, hammer the point of by faith alone. It's not about your works. If, if someone says you, know, you will go to hell if you uh, commit murder or commit theft or commit uh, all these bad things, okay? Now, if someone uh, believes that it's only by faith alone, it's only by trusting on Jesus, not trusting on your works, and if someone believes once you are saved, you can never lose your salvation, now you can try to help them uh, actually receive the gift of salvation. Now, before I do that, I would always ask them a couple of questions to make sure they really believe on every single aspect of the gospel. I would ask them, do you believe that you are a sinner? And question number two, do you believe that we deserve to go to hell because of our sin? And question number three, do you believe that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh and, die, and that He died for us and He rose again? And question number four, I would ask them, um, if you want to ask Jesus to save you right now, what do you have to do? And question number five, once you are saved, how long is that going to last, okay? Now, if they uh, give me all the right answers, I assume they believe the gospel. I assume they really believe the Bible says it's by faith alone. And then I will show them Romans chapter 10, verse number 9. The Bible says that if thou, so I will tell them that's you, that's your choice, right? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And in verse 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then I would ask them, Can I help you to ask Jesus to save you right now? If they say yes, I will lead them with a prayer, okay? Now, I realize that there's some uh, confusion about uh, do you have to pray to be saved? Now, I would address this issue in a later video, but my position is if you believe and you ask God to save you, you are saved. And I would always lead them with a word of prayer after I know they believe right on the gospel. Now, here's a sample prayer that I always use, okay? I would explain to them the word itself does not save you. The mere word of the prayer does not save you. It's your faith in Christ, okay? If you don't believe in your heart and you only say the words in your mouth, you are not saved. You have to actually believe in your heart. And I would always tell them, if you don't believe what I say, don't repent repeat after me, okay? Now, if someone uh, agrees with everything I say, I will leave them with a prayer like this. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I deserve to go to hell, but I trust that you died for me and you rose again. Please save me now and give me everlasting life. I'm only trusting you, Jesus. 
Amen. Now, after the prayer, I would ask them,、um, "Did you mean that?" And most people say, "Yes, no, I meant what I said." Now, at that point,、um, I, I believe that they are saved. Okay, but I would always ask a follow-up question. Now, if you die today, do you know for sure that you are going to heaven? And most people will say yes. Now, if people say they are still not sure, then they are probably not saved. Okay, you can either leave them with one more verse, or you can clarify the points that they are uncertain about. Okay. Now, in the following videos, I'm going to talk about how to follow up with new converts. Okay, how to.、Um, How to actually fulfill、uh, all three steps of the Great Commission? God bless you. Have a good day.